What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Comments here for you. Jimmy Smith, Ryan Moody, our MMA show. Jimmy, what are the two most controversial words in MMA right now? Herb Dean. Thank you. We actually, believe it or not, we talked like for 15 seconds before this one. So I was literally like, I think Herb Dean? Like, that was, you know, I wasn't sure. We didn't discuss this, by the way. We I could have said that. quite a. We don't do that here on, on Moody and Smith. We don't do that. All right. Well, let's talk about her. And I feel like, to be fair, the only time we talk about Herb Dean, or any referee for that matter, is when things don't go the right way. We have a ton of fights that we cover. So in the art of being transparent, 90% of the time, there isn't an issue. Now, I watch the fights, much like you, without the sound off. So last night, I'm watching Derek Brunson on mount, final 17, 15 seconds left of the fight. And I honestly see Herb Dean move in, and I thought, wave the fight off. But instead, he was actually kind of just mirandering around and then waving the round off. So I had kind of turned back, assuming the fight was over, very impressed with, with Derek Brunson, which I don't say all that often. But I then later learned that he allows this to continue. We go to some um, corner articulation. And it's just another step backwards lately for Herb Dean and his judgment to many fans. Yeah. You know what it looked like? It looked like, uh, what was it, round two or three? I, I don't know which round it ended. Of um, the very end of Weidman Rockhold. Remember when he had Mount and he's just beating Weidman's head through the floor? And there were maybe 15 seconds left. And, and you just got the feeling or I did when I was watching it, that, okay, Rockhold's going to have to kill him. For, for Herb Dean to stop a championship fight with 10 seconds left in the round. That he knew there were only a few seconds left, and come hell or high water, we were going to see that next round. Right? I got that same feeling. That it was like he knew there were 10, 15 seconds left in the round. That unless Shabazian is dead, he's going to let it go to the end of the round. And, I mean... I remember the first time with Rockhold Weidman being a little torn, going, yeah, I see a title fight, world championship on the line. There are 10 seconds left. You know, even though he's mounted and getting beat up, do you stop that fight and not give him the time to get to the next round? The thing about this one is, is Shabazian was clearly out at the end of the round. Like, it was just... Yeah, he was saying he could continue. Most fighters are going to say they can continue, like, you know, most will. But the fight was done. And th the problem with it was, unlike Rockhold Weidman, as soon as he got in bad position and there were a couple of meaningless, comparatively meaningless punches, I mean, you know, no punch is meaningless, um, Herb was just waiting for a reason to stop the fight. He was just, okay, it's over, done, da-da-da. Well, if you're that convinced, you should have done it at the, the end of this, the last round. I mean, I'm not crucifying Herb for it. It's a judgment call. But why let somebody back in just to, you know, if the first, you know, not knockout punch they take, I'm going to stop this fight. Well, then stop it then, you know. And so I, I thought it was very similar to, to, to Rockhold Weidman. And it just seemed like a, a little too much, a little too much. It's, it's a judgment call, but a little too much. I, I would have stopped it at the end of the round because – you know, the, the cage side physician, unless there's a major cut or something, you know, your arms folded the wrong way or something, it's, are you okay? Can you continue? What day is it? Well, most fighters blind in both eyes are going to say the right answers, right? They're going to, they know what questions are coming and they're going to give you the answer to keep fighting. So you knew that wasn't going to stop it. And then what happens? He got an extra rest, right? The, the physician checked him out and then the end of the round, they check him out. And I mean, the end of the break of the round, I'm sorry, they check him out. So he got extra rest when he's exhausted. If I were Brunson, I'd be like, shit, man, you're giving this guy an extra 15 seconds, which is a long time in a situation like that. So I thought it was muddled, and, and it, it seemed like Herb's decision-making was a little confused. Or he seemed a little hesitant, as you said. You know, like he was stepping like he was going to stop it, and then he didn't. He seemed indecisive, and I think that's probably a leftover of the Hardy situation. Yeah, and I was just going to go there. I mean, I think – Herb is a, is, a, is a good referee. He is. But I, I think like all fighters, you know, we would talk about it comes down to two things. It, it comes down to being decisive and being confident. And I feel like it's very hard based on what we've seen with the Toronto fight for Herb to 
have that confidence and have that decisiveness. It, it's a slippery slope, okay? In, in, in one way, as you said there, you know, although this was nowhere, you know, I, I guess you could you could make the connection. This could be viewed as a contender fight. I, I really don't feel like it, it's a monumental, this is the next guy up fight. I actually thought it was a little ironic that the way they did the preview for this card was, you know, tomorrow stars today. Well, <laughs> well then why am I watching Bobby Green and Derek Brunson? But, yeah. You know, yeah. moving forward from that, uh, th- this wasn't a situation where I feel like he would be able to have stepped in and had a lot of people push back and say, oh, no, you know, he was still way in this. What an early stoppage. But he's second guessing himself. You know, and I think that, as you mentioned, right. is a direct result uh, of Dan Hardy. And to be fair, he can't be in his position if he's going to not be confident and not be firm at his judgments. As you said, what is the point of sending somebody back out for one more punch? If you really, truly feel like that's all it's going to take is one more bad exchange, you are you aren't protecting the fighter. And I know a lot of blame goes to the fighter. I know a lot of blame goes to the corner. But at the end of the day, it's ultimately the referee, in my opinion, it, it, they are the first line of defense for the fighter in there. Before the corner, before the fighter, it's them. And they have to be prepared to be clear and concise. And right now, Herb is just neither one of those things. Yeah. And it's, you got to, you know, right or wrong, like indecisive is worse than wrong in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? If you, if you, if you're decisive, but wrong as a referee, that that's bad, but being indecisive is even worse. And that's what sucks is, is what you talked about in the beginning is look, we only talk about when they do things wrong but i think herb dean over the last couple of years has made some really bad calls i really he stands out to me in my mind as somebody who uh generally does a good job but but recently it hasn't been good you can go all the way back you know even you know askren lawler i thought he made the wrong call there and there have just been quite a few instances of him kind of bungling the call right at these and you know as i said rockhold versus weidman i i disagreed with that one there have been a few times where it seems like you know, Herb has made some some lapses in judgment. Maybe they're catching up to him. Maybe the 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 public criticism and the pressure is starting to get to him a little bit. Um, when it comes to Dan Hardy's situation, I, I it's funny. I I agree that the 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 the, the stoppage was late. I agreed that um, it was a you know he took some unnecessary damage. Um, what you can't do is directly speak to a referee during a fight and say stop the fight and all that stuff. And I did my own breakdown of that and why I believe that to be the case, but production can't influence a fight. Promotion can't influence a fight. That's a huge line that you you can't cross, but it doesn't change the fact that I think Herb Dean made the wrong call and let that fight go a little too long. It just seems like it's, it's happening more and more. And it's, it's hard to think of hmm, other referees that have been in that situation. Cause usually referees like good or bad, like Mario Yamasaki was a guy who I, in my opinion, made a lot of mistakes his whole career. You know, so Steve Mazzagatti is a guy who made a lot of mistakes throughout his career. Big John made one or two, but was generally regarded as a good referee. I think Jason Herzog is probably one of the best out right now. I think Mike Beltran is outstanding, but rarely is it. There aren't a lot of ups and downs in a referee's career. Like, of course, they make bad calls. But when have we seen somebody, Herb Dean, who who had been near the top for so long, kind of starting to, to, in my opinion, make a lot of not so subtle errors? Yeah, I mean, I I used to hold Mark Goddard in a little bit higher regard, but I've seen him, uh, I think, cross some lines in in how he addresses fighters or deals with fighters, Uh, although he did a great job the other night, uh, stopped the fight and ended up getting, like, shot on afterwards and, you know, really composed himself well. But to to go back to to the Herb situation, I I think, as you mentioned, you know, this, this is a direct result of someone that's having to replay things in their head. You know, did did I see what I think I saw and am I making the right decision? Because if not, I'm going to try to reverse my own decision. And and that's the last thing you need in there. We don't need you to do anything else than react to the moment. I feel like he's trying to process things now and and the, the fight ending sequence or the, the round ending sequence kind of blending together for Herb. And it's so, you know, we can see it, right? Like that's the thing. You know, it, you can see it. You can kind of hear it to a degree. We don't want to, as fans, see the wheels turning, the gears moving in someone's head. I will always 
and I don't care who the fight is. I, I will always be okay with a stoppage with the fighter's safety in mind. I think I start to get more irritated or more upset when I see somebody taking damage that I feel like is presentable or I see they're in a situation where I know, hey, there's no coming back from this. There's there's a Hail Mary and then there's a, a miracle, right? And, and I know anything can happen, but at the same time, you really have to be in a good position to understand, hey, these are where fight ending sequences happen. Let me put myself in the best position to end this should it start, and then I don't have to worry about what's going to happen. But if you're going to sit there and worry about what other people are going to think or say about you in a vacuum, odd that we're sitting here talking 11 minutes about it. But if you're going to sit there and think about what the public perception is, it's maybe time, you know, to look into another element of it. I mean, Herb could very easy, easily train based on his catalog and library of work, you know, the next great 20 referees we have in the sport, you know, but now it just seems like, as you said, we're all seeing kind of this gradual decline where you know, for the first time in my life, I, I've, I've literally a couple times I've sat there and been like, oh, God, you know, Herb's fight here. You know, is this going to pan out OK? And, and I hate that. That was the, the Mario feeling I had. Oh, God, here's, you know, Mary Hamasaki, you know, two men leave, one man enters. It's on him. I, I don't like feeling that way about her, because as you said, for the longest time, th this guy was, you know, one of the best in class when it came to referees. It's like being a fighter to some degree. Like when a fighter starts slipping, you can almost see them thinking about things that used to be natural. They're thinking about the combinations and how to attack and how to defend and how their submission game goes when it used to just flow and it used to be natural and it used to be automatic. You catch Herb now, it seems, thinking about what he's doing more than trusting his instincts to step in at the right time. Yeah, and just like a fighter, I think when we start to see that, it's time to start to talk about how how does the book close, you know, yeah. in this case, in this case, the problem I have is, you know, we've made that distinction. It's not about a fighter. That's not, it really is about a fighter. That's still not defending himself. The difference is that this is Herb trying to protect that fighter, as opposed to a fighter trying to protect themselves. It's a much more dangerous situation. I think uh, on this side, because he can impact so many careers. Yeah. And it's like the consequences of a fighter, you know, slipping, it's on them. And then a referee slipping, that that's everything. That's everything because that affects the health of everybody in there. Absolutely agree. So with that said, we appreciate you guys checking this out, and we will be back very shortly with more commentary. 